Hey, fifth graders, Mr. Bell here. All right, well, it's that time of the year. I'm going to start making some holiday stuff. And uh, you don't have to add decorations to your tree. Um, you can just make it look like a real tree if you want to. Uh, but anyway, this project is the three-dimensional paper tree. It's just a decoration for a tabletop, kitchen table, dining room table, dresser, wherever you want to put it. And of course, um, it is three-dimensional. It has height. Let's see here. There we go. Height. It has length. And you open it up. It's got width, too. It is three-dimensional. Notice that each section matches. I'm going to show you how I did that. All right. The first thing you're going to need is a sheet of construction paper. Um, if you don't have green construction paper, you can do this project on any uh, color paper. It could be white paper, um, whatever, red paper. It doesn't really matter. It just looks more like a tree if it's green. Uh, you can always uh, use white paper. That's fine. And you're better off with construction paper or something thicker. If you try to do this with regular white computer paper, it's probably just going to fall over. Um, uh, it won't stand up as well because the paper is not as stiff. So, all right, step one. You need to fold your paper in half. Try to match up the corners the best you can. It's the hamburger fold. All right. And then, we're going to cut this paper in half. And you will be using both halves to make this project. And there we go. Take both of these pieces and fold them in half also. And this one. Okay, we'll put one of them to the side. Get your pencil ready. And we are, it's kind of a stylized tree. It doesn't really have a, a tree trunk because it needs to be flat at the bottom so it can stand up on a table. So don't, don't draw a tree trunk on this, it'll just topple over. And I usually go like this. One. Go a little further out. Two. Make sure that you're not coming back towards the middle. You need some space. Second one, that's about a finger width. That's about two finger widths. And the third one, I'm just going to go down to the bottom like that. Okay. One. Two and three. Okay. Um, you can also, I've got two other pieces over here. Um, you can also do a different style. You could start at the top left corner and eh, we'll go to about here. Oops. There we go, to about here, to here. And I'm going to go straight down. All right. And once you have that part done, you can do this style tree instead. It's a more realistic looking one. Notice I'm coming back to this guideline that I made. And I'm just going to go down to the corner for the very bottom part. It's kind of hard to see the glare on the paper. There we go. So I did a guideline. You know, you can use a, a ruler to do that line too if you want to. If you do that first. Um, and then these. I did these little shapes on the side. And I always stop with the guideline. Okay. Then I can erase the guideline. You don't need it anymore. Right, so I've shown you two different ways of doing this. This one's a little more cartoony looking, but it's very nice. And then there's this style, more realistic. 
Oh, there we go. You can see it better that way. What you do next is keep it folded and then cut very carefully on the line that you made. This one's much easier to cut out if you do this style. It's just less to cut. All right, I'm going to put that with this piece. My trash paper over there and on here. This one's a little bit more of a challenge. I always go back to the side and cut it out like that. Melt it over to the side, let it fall. You can see this is a bit more of a challenge to cut, but if you use these little tricks like I'm showing you, you wouldn't have any problem. I'm going to go ahead and cut this up to the corner and get this little piece last. There we go. Put all the trash paper over here, make a neat little pile, throw it away later. Okay. So I've got these two, I've got these two, and what you do next is you open up the piece you cut, slide it in there, make sure they both can open and close simultaneously. Make sure they match at the bottom. You want it to fit in there snug. Same thing. All right, folded part goes into the folded part. Make sure it matches at the bottom. And then you trace. Take your time. Trace. And the last one. My finger got in the way there. Now you have a duplicate. It's the exact same design as that one. Same thing with this. Trace. And you'll have to cut again on both of these. That way you'll have two sets, okay? All right, got one little part left on this one. Now I have two that match. Get all the trash over here. And this one, you finish cutting. All right, there we go. These two match, and these two match. Now what you need to do now next is open these up. Remember, you only have to do one of these. You don't have to make two, but I want to show you both ways, uh, different kinds of trees, so you can choose which one. You can try. You can do both if you want. Flatten them out. You can get your pencil and do your little patterns and designs. Markers, crayons, uh, this one, I, uh, you know, I did some marker lines. Then I used crayon to make the little decorations on the lines and a white crayon to do the zigzag. Same thing on that side. Same thing in there, same thing in there. All right, you want them to match. If you do a different, if you do different designs on these, when you splice it together, they're not going to match. And, you're not going to be happy. Let me show you some different ones I've done. These are bigger versions of the same project. Okay. So there's some more abstract looking. This is similar to the one I showed you earlier. Okay. You can go vertical too if you want to. Some little horizontal lines. And this one. Is very abstract looking. This one has a plaid, a tartan design. Okay, so it's really up to you what design or pattern that you want to put inside these. And I'm going to go ahead and get started on these. And um, let me just fast forward a little bit after they're finished. So I'm adding a bunch of dashes in here. This is my more realistic looking tree. This one I'm not decorating. It's not going to be Christmassy. It's just going to be, you know, a tree. 
the evergreen tree. All right, did both of these sides. Um, on this one, I put some zigzag lines across and some uh, vertical straight brown lines, like dashes, in between. You know, there's more I could do. I could add more. I could come in here and I could, you know, add dots in between, have a pattern there. Um, I could also come into this one and, you know, I could color in with some light green if I wanted to. But point is, when you're when you finally have both sides finished, whatever style tree you decide to do, then it's time to cut and splice them together so they will be uh, three-dimensional and be able to stand up. So this is how you do that. Let me go ahead and make sure I can see the crease on here. And on one of them, you start at the bottom and you cut up towards the middle. Try to keep that line very vertical. And go a little bit past halfway. And halfway is about right there. I went a little bit, a little bit past it. All right. On this one, flip it this way, and very carefully go to the very pointy part and cut downward. Go a little bit past halfway. Then go like this and splice together. So I cut more than I needed to. That way I know for sure it's going to match up and make sure it, it's lined up at the bottom. Then you can get some tape. And I like to get a really small piece and tear it in half. So I have two little pieces. And get as close to the top as you can. Make sure the tape does not stick out past the tree. And I'm going to get this part down here. That will hold the top and the bottom together really well. Now I can do a longer piece and push it in there. Do the same thing on this side. A little piece up here. A little piece down here. And a longer piece. Then open it up. Flatten it out. And you could technically be done after that. It'll it'll stay together. Okay, when it's on the tabletop, it'll it'll look like this when it's on the tabletop. Okay. Uh, if you want to really be extra secure, then you can put tape on this part too. I usually do. I usually do the tape on the rest of it. This is the frosted tape. You could you could use clearer tape so you don't see the frost at all. And this would be the last part to do. There we go. And in here as well. Gentle. Now that's not coming apart. There we go. It's paper, so you can bend it whichever way it needs to go. Just push it wherever it needs to till it's like that. All right. Same thing with this one. From the bottom up, from the top down. A little bit past halfway, splice it together, make sure it's matched at the bottom, and then put your little pieces of tape wherever you feel like you need to do that, and on this side and so forth, and flatten it out. Open it up, push where you need to, and voila. All right, all right, you have a good time with this. Can't wait to see them. All right, take care. Bye-bye.